other songs than the three from the original Van Halen and two from the Sammy catalog. While I wish they played more than three songs, that's all they did, but it was still a great show, and in my opinion, I remember people at the show saying they were disappointed they didn't play more than those three songs, but it is what it is. Thanks, Chris Rooks. Well, Chris, yeah, I hear you, uh, what you're saying, but Jump was removed early on from the set list, so I don't even count that one. You really got me as a cover... So technically, they only did two old Van Halen songs, plus two Sammy Hagar songs, and a bunch of covers here and there. So I think that rehearsal line is kind of crap from them. They didn't have enough time. Come on, that's a little much BS. I really think that was all negotiated by Sam's manager, Ed Leffler, who was became Van Halen's manager. Why don't we do two old Sam's and two Van Halen's? And to be honest with you, I think they really wanted to whitewash the past. I, I think they removed Roth from the crowd's memory. It was very clear. There were things that were edited out very carefully of Live Without a Net, the 5150 tour video. When I saw them live on that tour, it was like an anti-Dave rally. I mean, they had posters and signs, and Sam was making comments on stage. And Sam will even tell you, I think the direct quote from Sam was, Dave was the enemy. And they were on a campaign to douse Dave, for sure. I don't know, I thought Sammy had some balls, let me tell you, to just play a couple of Van Halen songs. It was shocking, you know, when I saw them. I, I, I love the show. And I love the album, and so I thought it was really good, but it was very, very different. What do you think of this, Dave? I'd almost buy that argument if they didn't do that every tour after that one. Yeah, I know. I mean, I don't think it was so much Ed Leffler as it was Sam. Right, I think right. Sam, yeah. and he said this in an interview, you know, he was more or less insecure about singing the old stuff. Oh, yeah. So, I, I do agree with you. I think that line is BS. Yeah, and even yeah. if it's true... Like, you had uh, an opportunity a a bunch of tours after that, and they still didn't do that. You know, maybe they might throw in an extra one, like Running With The Devil or something like that. But that was few and far in between. So I I really don't buy that excuse either. Absolutely. And we are on to letter number two. Very interesting letter from Scott Zulke. And he says, Dave and Dave, the last two podcasts, September and October, both of you have criticized Sammy Hagar for the scarcity of the Dave era Van Halen songs that he sung live while he was fronting Van Halen. You pointed out that Sam, at some point during his Van Halen tenure, sang Running With The Devil, Jump, Panama, Ain't Talk About Love, Unchained, and You Really Got Me. You stated that they were the only Dave era Van Halen songs he sang and criticized him for not singing more. Comments were made that Sam had a bug up his butt about singing the old catalog and that you're the lead singer of the band, man. Come on, do your job. I think he was quoting you there, Dave. Basically, your criticism was if you are the lead singer of Van Halen, then you should sing the Van Halen catalog. Point taken. However, to accept that argument, then you also need to criticize David Lee Roth for not singing the Van Halen catalog as well. Songs created when Sam was fronting Van Halen are part of the catalog too. While Sam only sang six Dave-era songs during his tenure, how many Sam songs has Dave sung? None. I sense a little bias with your criticism. Scott Zulke. Well, Scott, okay, I see your point. It's a good question. But wait, here's the difference. Dave is the lead singer, the original lead singer, singer of Van Halen. So he was not a replacement singer. That makes a big difference. Plus, Dave can't sing the Sammy songs. And I also want to point out that I gave Sammy a huge compliment in that particular conversation that I listed a boatload of old Van Halen songs that he would have sound amazing on because he has the vocal abilities to pull that off. Now, Sam would have sounded great on so many different songs. I love Sam's voice. He never disappoints vocally. He's a cool guy to hang with. He's nice for sure. We are not biased against Sam. Yes, we prefer Dave and Van Van Halen, because to me, I always felt like Sammy in Van Halen is a different band, but we all love Sam. Hey, listen, we love The Circle, we love Manchos, we love Hassas, we love Chicken Foot. We're doing a whole special on Chicken Foot this time out. We love Solo before Van Halen, Solo after Van Halen, everything. We, I have met Sam, I've interviewed Sam, I've hung with Sam, I've taken pictures with him and got his autograph and, and, and interviewed him multiple times. I love him. I think he always delivers. Now, my only criticism is, Sam, I'd love to 
to hear you on some of these songs. I think you'd kill it. Kill it. Now, here, let me point this out. Ozzy never did any Dio songs. He's the original lead singer of Black Sabbath. Plus, he couldn't sing Ronnie James Dio songs. He doesn't have the pipes to do it. Ozzy, like Dave, is a stylistic singer. Whereas Dio and Sammy have more strong vocal cords, you know. Now, Vince Neil, he's the original lead singer of Motley Crue. You don't see him singing John Karabi songs. John Karabi was the replacement singer. And he can't sing like John Karabi because he doesn't have the voice that John Karabi has. Vince Neil, like Ozzy and Dave, is a stylistic singer. He doesn't have, like, the super strong vocal cords that a John Karabi or Johnny James Dio or Sammy Hagar has. Now, also, you don't see Brian Johnson from ACDC complaining about doing the Bon Scott songs. That's for sure. He was a replacement singer. I think it's a different situation. What do you think, Dave? I think you raised some good points, but I do admit that I was pretty emphatic about what I said. Yeah. But I do agree that Dave and the rest of the band, for that matter, does not give any respect to the Sammy era at all. They don't they don't even try. Like, there's got to be like a few songs that Dave could sing and he just he just won't. It's really interesting. If it's Sam, he's very hesitant to do the Dave stuff. Right. If it's Dave, he doesn't even do the Sam stuff. Right. Because, like you said, he has enough trouble singing his own stuff. Never mind that he has to sing Sam's stuff. That's for sure. So, yeah. Right? I mean, but that's the thing with the band. Each lead singer only wants to do his part of the show and doesn't want to do the songs that came either before or after him. And that's just the way it is with this band, which is unfortunate because half the catalog always gets ignored. That's true. That's true. We are on to letter number three, Dave and Dave. When I was a junior in high school, a kid in the early 80s, I listened to Van Halen in a desperate attempt to fit in with the cool kids in the back of the bus. By the time David Lee Roth went solo with Crazy from the Heat, Diamond Dave was who I secretly wanted to be when I grew up. Then came Sammy Hagar. My interest in Van Halen went dormant for almost 30 years until it was reawakened by A Different Kind of Truth, an album I like as much as any of the band's heyday albums. All that said, I still don't know much about Van Halen and its members for those who have stuck with them through thick and thin. So listening to your podcast is a fascinating window into everything I've missed. I also greatly appreciate the chemistry between you two with your different extrovert introvert personalities complementing each other nicely. The show is a great listen. The Dark Days of David Lee Roth episode was particularly entertaining, and I just wanted you to know. And to Dave Marconi, you are not the only Van Halen fan who loves the monkeys. On my list of top 10 favorite artists, Van Halen is only number 10 or 11, but the monkeys are still number one. Keep up the great work and have fun in Vegas. Corey Snyder from Minneapolis. Wow, Corey, thank you so much for those kind words. That is fantastic. I wouldn't call Dave an introvert, though, that's for sure. He would, uh, but, um, well, maybe compared to you, I am. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Maybe, but uh, the monkeys over Van Halen, I think we got to take you to a doctor, Corey, and see what's going on inside that skull of yours. No, what? there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, it's all right. listen to Dave coming to your defense. <laughs> Hey, look, there's two of us out there now. Oh, so wow. That, that's fantastic. You're not but alone, thank you for the Dave. kind words. We, we appreciate it and glad you like the podcast, and that's the reason we do it, you know? It's a, it's a labor of love, and we're not doing it because we like to hear ourselves talk. We uh, Well, that might be a little bit a part that's of it. That's right. But uh, we, we like other people to hear us talk. So thank you for your kind words. That's, that's awesome. Right. That's right. Nice to know someone's listening. That's right. <laughs> I look like I'm in labor and Dave's in love. That's for sure. So we, <laughs> and we are on to letter number four. This comes from Dan Nianan, who who's going to be doing the uh, Eddie Van Halen con report for us. He's offering a what if scenario for the mailbag segment. And oh, my God, listen to this. This is a crazy what if. So what if Eddie Van Halen wasn't the absolutely incredible guitar player he is? and greatest guitarist of all time. What if the album sold very well without his incredible guitar wizardry, but just had run-of-the-mill guitars, but all the same songs, would the band have become as famous? My theory is yes, because of the amazing songwriting. Dan Nianan. Well, Dan, that is a very tricky question to answer, and we are definitely going into a special episode of What If. Now it's time for What If with Dave and Dave. Shit! What if? What if? Dave Marconi's favorite segment, What If? What if, motherfucker? 
I don't do what ifs. Now, that is a, a very tricky question to answer, Dan, because Eddie Van Halen's style is so embedded in the songwriting, I don't know how you'd separate it, but you asked us for the what-if scenario, so I will play along for that. So for the sake of the argument, I'd say Van Halen would still be big and popular, but not legendary, because they're certainly legendary for Eddie's groundbreaking guitar. I also think they're legendary for Dave's work as a lead singer and frontman, but they wouldn't have the legend that they have. I think they would be, you know, like Poison, for example, has a lot of fun songs, but they're they're not legendary. Like like I think they'd be popular and they do well, but they're not like I don't think they'd have the legend they have. What do you think, Dave? No, they wouldn't be anything because okay, they were brought on for Ed's guitar work. I mean, that was really the shining star of the band. I'm not taking away anything else from any of the other band members. But really, Ed's guitar was the selling point. It certainly was for Ted Templeman. Oh, sure. I mean, so much so that David Lee Roth was worried that they were going to pluck Ed out of the band (laughs) and use him for other things. Yeah, it's for sure. And break up the band. So I really don't think that the band would have even gotten a record contract if it wasn't for Ed. Because, yeah, the songs are good, but... There's lots of bands who have good songs, yeah. but Ed's playing just took it to a whole nother level. Yeah. So I don't think we ever, they would have been just some like, I don't know, like I, I was going to say maybe they'd be like a local legend, Yeah. but there's lots of bands out there who can write decent songs. But I mean, if you can't play them, that's a problem. I mean, then you go off and you have a songwriting career somewhere, right? Yeah, I mean, right. So- exactly. Exactly. The the, uh, the short answer to his question is no. I don't think we we really would have heard from the band if it wasn't for Ed's playing. Sure. That's all, folks. On to letter number five, and this comes from a man by the name of. Kevin Newton. And he says, Hello, baby. My friend Paul Davis, whose letter you guys read last month, introduced me to the podcast, and I love it. And he says, This is the part of the letter you can edit out. <laughs> so I- <laughs> he just well, thank it. you for your proactive. Can you imagine? I appreciate you knowing who you're writing the letter to and what we're going to do. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, he said he's from New York. He's the same age as us. He's been to many of the same shows as us. But one thing he wanted to mention here is he says, one of you mentioned that Dave gave you, quote unquote, douche chills. And boy, can I relate to that. I saw him, I think, around 97 at the Avalon in Boston. And I swear there were weren't more than 50 to 60 people there, and Dave was terrible. He was flirting with some young girls at the edge of the stage, and he carried a bottle of Jack Daniels and stopped in front of them and acted like he was jerking off by dousing these girls in Jack Daniels or whatever was in the bottle. It was creepy on a dirty old man level, and that gave me a major case of douche chills. <laughs> Which, oh, God. And sadly, we've seen Dave do oh, that. Oh, I know, I know. So then he also talked about, I was wondering if you ever heard of Rockabye, which is the lullaby versions of rock and rap songs. It's interesting enough that the woman who founded this company is David Lee Roth's sister, Lisa. And an interesting twist, she was a nutritionist before she got into the music business, and Gary Sharon was one of her clients. He also said that him and Paul are attending the January 11th Vegas show and hope to see us there. Rock on, Kevin Newton. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us aboard here, and we'd love to see you in Vegas, and Dave and I are definitely going to put together a meet and greet thing to come up with our listeners we'll talk about that on on the next month's podcast dave and i definitely saw a roth do that jd thing and let's be honest that was definitely not cool uh it's kind of gross and crazy and appropriate these days no matter whether it was back then or now yeah i don't that's kind of a very strange move Uh, i have to say though i did get squirted by the jd bottle and it is jd because it stained my clothing with not look wise but you could smell it it was you know like real jd number one and number two yes the rockabye company i have actually i've uh, been trying to get lisa on the podcast hopefully i'll be able to do that and and he oh he also noted that it's interesting that they have van halen versions of the rockabye songs but no van hagar versions i wonder why well obviously because i think that uh, dave doesn't consider that van halen i think that and, and obviously his sisters would follow his wishes hopefully i can get her on one day that would that would be great we'll see what happens with that 
that. What, what do you think, Dave? Yeah, I forgot that that happened.